there's always I always say there's a little bit of a lag usually between pressing start and uh, the video starting up on YouTube but I think we're live is anyone in the chat not not yet but we're definitely live welcome to episode 17 episode 17 it's that time of the week what you're listening to got a great line, lineup of guests again as always Stephen's back for the second time how you doing my friend glad to be here thanks for having me back thanks for coming on Jason's here how you doing mate hello all the way from Toronto and Jen my old mate how you doing Hi, bud thanks for coming on man good to thanks see you thanks for the invite good to see everyone thank you for tuning in everybody uh yeah as usual we've got five records each we've been listening to it's always tough right to choose just five but oh, i think yes. we've got there we've got there right we've done it we've got five records each i have a so, stack uh, of 15. But... <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> no i'll, I'll just pull the first five <laughs> i mean there's a lot yeah. i i i, I kind of do too but uh, i've narrowed it down to five and uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to everyone's picks. As usual, I didn't specify a genre, but I think vinyl is the way to go with this channel. So it's probably going to be all records. Uh, it's been a lot of variety recently. People like variety, you know, and mm -hmm. new releases, old releases, things they didn't know about. You know, it's all good. It's all good on this show. So, shall we get going? Yeah, let's let's, let's get going. Let's I mean, la rip. last week was a two-hour marathon. Let's see how. <laughs> Let's see how this week goes. <laughs> All right. Cheers, everyone. Let's do a cheers. 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 Get that, yeah. cheers. With my I'm going to do something I never do. I'm going to do it right now because I always forget. This is the message from the sponsor. Mm. Do I like and subscribe, which I hate doing, but just like and subscribe. There you go. That's the end of that. Uh, let's go to the chat. There'll be It's open, but no one's here yet. All right. Today, let's go this way. Me, Steve. Jason and Jen, we'll do one each. We'll go around five times and we'll have a good time talking about some great records. Excellent. Excellent. So last week, at the end of last week, we talked about this just off camera, actually, about Radio Rahim. We were talking about them, right, about how they put out a lot of really great old demos and stuff. And at the end of last week's show, um, James showed this record, the Hellbent yeah, demos. Yeah. And within like two days, I'd managed to track down a copy. So thanks to James for like recommending this record. It's amazing. Yeah. So if you haven't heard this and you're thinking, well, do I need some like old 84, 85 demos from this like kind of underground New York band from back in the day? Yes, is the answer. They do. Because this <laughs> is some incredible, like ripping metallic hardcore, which is kind of ahead of its time, I would say. This stuff. It's yeah, crazy. definitely. Right? Yeah, it blew me away to be honest. But uh, that's enough about this because James talked about it last week. But I just want to say thanks to James for recommending this and say hello to our uh, CC and Cooch, who are the two fine fellows behind mm. like Radio Rahim Records. They're doing a great job. So cheers and Fat Rich, who is from Philly. Really. All right, yeah. okay, he's from Philly. Okay, cool. Love so that. There's three guys doing Radio Rahim, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so much Coach, stuff CC, like. I don't know if CC's involved. I'm sure he is, but I know it's definitely uh it's definitely Cooch and uh Fat Rich. All right, okay. But great label. So yes. try and find out find any of their like releases. Yeah, I've got, I've got their, one radio release Rahim. Top notch, man. <clears throat> I have the I think it's like Insanity. Ah. It's like an eighties ah, metal yeah. band. Yeah. Yes. It's a very lo fi recording. I mean it sounds like a demo. Yeah. I think vinyl. everyone has some like a little bit of ESP going on today. So I'm going to go to my first pick for real, which is my short, sharp shock. Jason, you said it. <laughs> I'm going to show it. <laughs> oh, there it is. Wow. <laughs> it is. There it is. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. The Insanity demo from like 1985. Yeah. 10 minutes long, 10, 11 minutes long. You no, know, it was just a cassette tape, you know, back in the day. Yeah. And, uh, like nuclear war now reissued it at some point on a seven inch and finally it's in the big 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 style like big format thanks to radio raheem just some amazing like bay area like i was like death metal was kind of coming through yeah it's uh, proto like proto death metal yeah just very, i mean it's just like i'm not usually a kind of um rehearsal demo kind of a person you know mm. but this jesus christ it's uh something else 
you know, and they are. Yeah, it's good quality for that for that year sure. for around that time, you know. Good Absolutely. stuff. You know, they were a young band, underground band. They were playing around the Bay Area with like the possessed and death and all those kind of bands in the Bay Area. And then the, their singer passed away right at a really young age. Yeah. So they didn't get to power a record, and but so they were kind of like an underground like sensation back in that back in those days. And that ice. <laughs> Who's calling? That's my stockbroker's calling. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Buy more Radio Rahim. Buy Radio Rahim, yeah. It's I right, didn't even cool. know I had a phone. That's not, that label is good. Yeah. It's cool so, that they reissued that, though. Yeah, it's it is so cool. Funky. I like, you know, I like the twelve-inch format, you know, better than the seven-inch. And uh, what's it going to say? So I used to go like see when I used to go and see like Napalm Death in like eighty-six, eighty-seven. Like Mad mm-hmm. Mickey Harris would always like shout out bands that he was into. So we'd always like shout, Master, you know, like ah. repulsion, yeah, <laughs> insanity. Repulsion so I was like, cool. what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> it's like, yeah. you know, he was shouting at all these underground demos that he'd got like in the, it was in the tape trading days, right? Mm. So yeah, this is just great, raw, actually it's a little bit technical actually, but uh, really raw, like proto death, thrash, whatever you want to call it, but just a killer, yeah. killer record. Yeah, that's funny that you have this, Jason, too. I saw it on, on the VC. I think it was Eric Eric Bauer. Have you watched his channel? High, defi- mm-hmm. High Definition? Yeah. yeah, I think he showed it one time, and I was yeah. like, I Blue got to jeans, white shoes, yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. He's still growing Napalm, on me. Napalm oh. Death ended up like covering a title track on their like, Leaders, Not Followers, like Part 2 record. So oh, long-term... Wow influence on napalm death and carcass and all those bands you know for sure so i've nice. recently discovered repulsion and i fucking love it i was listening oh, to repulsion uh wow. today actually that's funny man that is some cool ass ass shit yeah pre-death metal right like yep. forefathers yeah yeah pre uh yeah. grindcore pre you, you name it yep. yeah just a relentless record so good Fuck, oh my god michigan yeah, yeah that one yeah there you go. That's my short, sharp shock of the day. Good Insanity. Pick, 985. Nice. All right, Stephen, what's your first pick of the day, my friend? All right, I'm actually going to start off today with an L.A. band. Um, cool. I feel like, uh, you know, we cover a lot of uh, LPs on this show, but uh, mm-hmm. I don't see many uh, seven inches, so I thought I'd pick a seven inch to start off with today. Nice. It's going to be uh, The Nerves, self-titled seven Nice. <laughs> yes. Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, this is the... Uh, 2020 splattered records reissue not an original uh, which i was surprised though i was looking up on discogs and even though it just only came out um just in 2020 copies are already going for like between 50 and 100 bucks that's and I found crazy. Out they, uh, there's a limited uh japanese version of this reissue too that's on red vinyl mic so yeah you can really? that, right? okay work there. but uh you know most wow. of your uh, most of your viewers probably know uh this band as being the original writers of hanging on the telephone which was made popular by Blondie. Blondie. Yes. Um, but this is just some absolutely beautiful power pop from, you know, it's got four songs on it. I feel like you could cover any one of these four songs and make a worldwide hit out of it. It's just such incredible songwriting. And I actually, I found out, I dug this out cause I was listening to it as well. And I found out that, uh, Jack Lee who wrote hanging on the telephone also wrote another song on, uh, this Blondie record, uh, really? called anything happened. So apparently they were, they must've been tight buds and, you know, he was, I'm sure he was happy to get those royalty checks from, uh, oh, hell you know, yeah. them broadcast that but yeah it was uh such a shame that this band only put out this one seven inch it's like pretty much perfect in my opinion and you know the guys went on to do a bunch of other projects too so i mean they're all all brilliant songwriters but uh you know if you haven't heard the original version of hanging on the telephone i definitely highly recommend checking it out you know blondie's version is incredible it's iconic but this one is really good too and all four of these songs are just you know it's power pop it's all about unrequited love you know they're just you know waiting around for the girl to realize that they were the cool guy i mean just look at how cool these guys look you know how dreamy <laughs> Yeah, yeah, dude. Look at that hair, man. Are you, yeah, look are, you at saying, hair. are you saying that they're cooler than? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't see their jeans or their sneakers, so it's hard to tell. Do, does anybody remember like that moment when they first heard the Nerves version? Were kind of like kind of shocked and blown away because you didn't know that, all, mm. that the Blondie version was like a cover. Was yeah, I think I heard it at like a, a punk DJ, DJ night, and I was like, "Oh wait, yeah. a second. Like, <laughs> yeah, I know this song. Yeah. yeah. I feel Jack like that that, Sorry, that seven might be on like uh, maybe on the Soul Jazz Records Punk Forty Five series. 
I don't know if the nerves are on there. I feel like that's where I heard because I got a bunch of those comps, but that's cool, man. Like you got that seven. Yeah, that was, really sold, that was an interesting curveball that Soul Jazz took with doing the punk compilation, oh, right? Yeah. yeah. They do it well though. I mean, they, I they love do. those records. Yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, did they I, just did they just start doing those those comps uh, maybe five, ten years ago? Or were they 10 always years? Doing? Yeah. And they did all the Ohio ones, and then they have a, a series from LA. There's about two comps from LA. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a little oh, box they did set. all the, did the is that the one uh, the Danger House box set? Did they do that? Or is that someone else? That. I don't know if they did that one, but the punk 45s, it's basically, yeah, punk 45s, but then they put them on LP, like uh, compilation albums. And then I do have like a, a 45s box set. For one of them. Yeah. I mean, Just a good a way to get all those, all those singles in one spot. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Less record flipping too. So <laughs> yeah. I, I, this yeah. has come up a few times on this show about <laughs> us old men are kind of tired, tired of like <laughs> yeah. 45s. Yeah. Like, you really got to be in the mood for it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, uh, someone else from the group actually posted uh, the nerves recently too. I think it was uh, Eric Good, and it was like a twelve inch that had these tracks plus some other unreleased demos and stuff. So Ooh, I didn't even nice. know it existed. But oh wow! And uh, you know, I'd already decided I was going to talk about this today, and then I saw him post that. I'm like, oh, he's he's giving me something to go check out now. So, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Classic. Classic. Yeah, I was just uh, when you yeah when you showed that uh, nerve. I mean, uh, yeah, when you showed that seven, I was wondering if they have an LP. You worth of stuff with with demos and rehearsals and unreleased yeah. stuff so cool yeah because like mike was Good just talking about all those old demos are getting dug up so yeah killer yeah are, are people in la still repping the nerves you know any young kids got like nerves back patches on their jackets or anything no <laughs> then you need to come back. <laughs> just old dudes you know like me you know uh <laughs> I know what's up, you know. I'm sure they have a, you know, they have a shirt, you know, but not a back patch or anything like that. But no, I've seen a couple of people wearing a nerve shirt here and there, but nice. no kids, no, definitely no, no kids with back patches with nerves, <laughs> nerves back patches. No. It'll happen. At all. It'll happen right at some point. After I hope so. episode, oh, yeah. yes, exactly after today's episode, influencer after this episode, yeah, yeah hopefully. <laughs> Just start right. being some, that's some a love. perfect like yeah it's just, just a great song i'm gonna track down that japanese red, red vinyl version or the lp just for sure mm. all right yeah, whichever you assemble across first in the uh in the yeah, bargain exactly. <laughs> all, for the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right jason what's your first all right. of print? I, i'm gonna keep it la too man wow. i was saying this to jen earlier like I've just sort of started discovering some of the earlier LA bands, and this is a reissue that was put out on Radiation Records. Wow. This is Mood of Defiance. Yes. Now this is a Under, one and done, right? This band. Yeah. Well, they they um, but include they did some do, uh, special members. A, yeah, but yeah, they they only did that officially, and then they're on uh, on some compilations. Yes. Yeah. One or two. And uh, they they unearthed some demos, of course, like maybe five six years ago. Yeah, uh, they did a they did a seven inch of all the demos and whatnot, which are great I, as well. But that LP is just under so underrated. Dude, it's a badass man. It's sick. Like it's it's female fronted and it's kind of avant garde, right? Like exactly. This, yeah. this band started in like seventy nine, so this is like. This Around is there, yeah. yeah, and the band, like the band, the the dudes, the guys, they were in that band, mm -hmm. Anti. Really? Yeah, yeah. 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 That's oh. they're just back. They're they're back. They're backup. That they're they were her backup band. Right. So, so one's like a side product. In fact, it says also the drummer on this is for is the drummer of Sacra and Trust. Yeah. Well, wow. That's another another band, but. But yeah, it's really cool. It was like a fresh discovery. I bought, I like buying everything on the Radiation Records reissue. Radiation, man, yeah. They do it well, man. Um, otherwise, I'd never hear of this. But yeah, there's just some like interesting stuff on here. There's like an instrumental. I think it's like an instrumental of like just like sound of rain, pouring rain. Yeah. On one of the tracks. Wow. So it's a bit experimental punk, you know, which is up my alley. Um. Yeah, I love it. I think this guy, I think Danny Phillips, I think he's from Anti, and I think he also ran yeah. a record label, too. That was his, yeah, uh, fuck. His project. Underground something, I forgot. Uh, yeah. This is the, the song lyrics or whatever, but yeah. Cool record. 
And yeah, I think you're right. Like maybe like they have one other seven or something, but this is yeah. With the one. yeah, they just got it. Just a bunch, uh, just demo tracks that that were um, they were they're not on the LP. Originally from 1982. You know? Yeah, but yeah, that's a great LP, man. That's another one I haven't heard yet, but I like. I love the anti. I've got all the anti anti reissues. All those anti LPs like, yeah. are great. amazing too. Cool. Amazing. Yeah. And they really? did also that same label did all those uh, um, life is ugly or life is beautiful, mm. you know, comps, those, the right? life comps. Those are great too. Okay. Bro. Oh yeah. Radiation is putting a lot of stuff out too, right? Radiation. Yeah, they're belting out that's, stuff left and right, man. Yeah. It's out of Italy, right? That label. Yes. Yeah. 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 So are they? The, um, are they aff affiliated with the black? Black on black, maybe? No, 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 no I don't think so. No, okay, I don't think so. This no. seems better quality, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I, I've had to go to back on black for a few things, like my extreme noise terror. You know, how else am I gonna get yeah. you know, some of these things? You know, yeah, I'll take yeah, them. Is that a no, no thing? Like, they're they're not good quality, but I don't, I've only, I think well, I've, I've only heard mixed thought, bag. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, I yeah, heard that it's kind of a bootlegish label, but I, not really. I could do a whole podcast on <laughs> back, back on black, black yeah. the history of the guys that do that label, but maybe yeah. I will <laughs> sometime. But uh, oh, it's UK based. Or? It's UK based. U UK based. Yes. Are they sketchy, Mike? What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to say just that's a good expression alone, man. What do you, what do you think? <laughs> well, the thing is, the, U the UK no has more. some. The UK has some different laws, I think, around around some of the copyright or something. So I think uh, I, feel, I feel like some reissues get were are, are okay over there, but not here. And I don't know there, if they are. There's all sorts zone. of stuff about like U.S. copyright laws. Yeah. We could go down a rabbit hole with this, but it's like, especially like a lot of jazz. There's a lot of like jazz bootlegs in Europe because the the copyright laws that the, the was it the the time limit. If they run out, so it's like it's yeah. a free for all. It's a yeah. free for all, uh, to reissue, or, well, not re repress or make records mm -hmm. of all this stuff. So, yeah. All right. It's wild. It's what it's the wild west. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Jen. What's your first pick of the day, man? Looking forward to this. What you got? All right. So we're gonna keep it short, sharp, shock. And this is my Ooh. first pick. And Mike, I know you're gonna know this one. It's accomplice. Can you make it out? Oh, there you go. Accomplice. Look, Look at that artwork, man. Yeah. Is that like some so Christmas these guys work? were around late 80s, early 90s. They're around the, the whole Burning Spirits uh, scene. Oh, mm -hmm. nice. And uh, man, I, this seven inch is just, just pure brutality, man. Just, just hooks and the fastness of course mm. and just amazing just the fold out as well let me show you the pictures on here man that's what we're looking these at these dudes <laughs> i mean that's what these guys we're talking like big mohawks guys look yeah dude. look at those pants though dude <laughs> Dude, Big Mohawk. Hammer pants. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. Keep it loose in the pit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jeez, yeah, dude. dude. These guys, man. The elaborate poster here. <laughs> yeah. 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 This is like oh. third wave, like Japanese hardcore, I would say. Like, so it's like okay. slightly younger guys, like not the Death Side generation, but like the next generation. Right, uh, playing like that. But they thing. were involved, right? There were the younger Bernie yes. Spirit dudes. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Them and like Gesh Pentst and bands like that. Yes, yes, another great record. Yeah. But yo, the, this guy right here, man, this guy always gets me. The guy on the oh, Hold, holding the stick. No, the guy the sword. <laughs> this guy, I'm pointing at, man. Uh, he, oh, he's, guy, yeah, he's the vocalist. He That's, passed away. Look at that guy. That's yeah, the vocalist. He passed he's... away. Like, oh no shit. Ten, All right, I'm gonna, I was gonna make. 
I was going to make fun of him, make jokes, but no, I'm not going to do that now. <laughs> but yeah, this is, a, this is a great record. I mean, I don't know why this hasn't been reissued. Mm. But uh, yeah, that if you see it, guy, yeah, it's really hard to get. Just like the um, the chicken bowels, which I'm still looking for. Mm. But yeah, this is a great record. Just like I said, blistering, just burning spirits, yeah. hardcore, man. I saw them live a couple sharp. times. You saw them? Okay. I was going to yeah, ask you. A couple them. of times, yeah. Like, oh, of course you like... did. <laughs> How were they? Just very right. much of, of the time, you know, like that really blistering, metallic, violent, violent, mm. like Japanese hardcore of like the late 80s, early early to early to mid 90s, you know? Yeah. Like Blaze, Accomplice, yes. Gesh Pensed, mm. Bandit. There were so many great bands around at that time, you know? Did they have the MC Hammer pants on when you saw them? <laughs> that's, well, yeah, that's, that's like the style, man. That's the style. They were ahead of their time, man. That, that's not until the '90s here. Like, I think it. Shit, yeah. Accomplice, great record. They, great band they and a great. They only had this seven inch and. I think so there's some compilation random, track, like, maybe. Compilation demo. tracks here and uh, yeah, but so you know, great mm -hmm. era of Japanese hardcore for sure. Yeah, bastard. Death side. Yeah. I know those bands you mentioned as well, man. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Jesus, it's my turn already. Wow. Time flies. We're having fun, right? So, like, last week, Paul was on, right? And Paul was a great guest. And, like, he did a first for this show. He, like, he showed a record that he didn't like. That he didn't like. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> so, that was it awesome. was great. And, like, it happens. Paul, Paul can get away with it because he's hilarious. But, like, you know, yeah. like, it's tempting to, to go down that road. But I'm gonna keep it to like records that I like, you know. I think Sometimes <laughs> I, you just want to talk it. <laughs> it was it was hilarious though, because you know Paul is a, a great speaker and it was the stories were hilarious. I just love that he's like I've, I've listened I listened to this seven <laughs> times this week what? and I can't <laughs> find one good song on this. <laughs> but there was actually some like context behind it because we were like we've talked about like power pop records that like maybe have like one good song. Or like You're one right. good guitar solo, but then like, end up like, on uh, the Power Pearls compilations, you know? Yeah, yeah. But it's like in this case, I couldn't find anything that I liked about it. So that was like the story behind that record. So I thought I'd mention that. I'm not. I'm not going to show records I don't like, but it was hilarious uh, yeah. last week. So, man, we had this little talk before we went on film about Carcass, and I was like, Jesus, you guys, you guys know know what I'm going to talk about today. So I'm going to go back to like Liverpool. 1984 and a band that has like a really 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 like tenuous connection to carcass um this record dementia mm. oh, dementia mm. okay. dementia 1984 uh liverpool band uh yeah like just uh it's on sky saw records now if anyone kind of if that rings a bell like sky saw records there's there was a um a, a kind of offshoot of uh sky saw called distraught that put out that, that anti-simex 12 inch okay okay mm. at, at the time so there's like this connection between anti-simex and this label and everything but it's like the guy that produced this went on to do like fucking dead or alive and orchestral moon was in the dark and oh, wow. uh, <laughs> echo and the bunnyman dead or like it's liverpool Bands, right so but he mm. when he was coming up he produced this record but it's like it's a weird record it's like it's some post-punk in there mm. some like gothic but there's also some kind of really almost like oi like oi or like mm. street punk of the time in the in here too it's kind of an odd record and it's not a great record but like you know if you're interested in like uk punk of this era the 80s mm. it's definitely one that you want to kind of track down but what was the carcass connection? I forgot. Yes. Yeah. What's that? That was it. That was it. So the guitarist of this band produced the Dis Attack tape. Oh. Okay. And Bill Steer was in Dis Attack, so that's like the very, very tenuous connection. Mm. But, but they're all they're, they're all like punks in Liverpool, you know, in the early eighties, mm. hanging out. And uh, yeah, it's not a great record, but if you're a collector of like that, this era of like UK punk and post-punk it's definitely worth tracking down 
Is that yeah. is that like a picture from the poll tax riots or something? It is something. That's a good question. It's taken in. Uh, it says on the back somewhere. Orms <clears throat> Grove, Orgreave, nineteen eighty five. I think you know what this is, Jason. I think it's like isn't it like the miner strike or something like that? Oh, and this time I think so. Orgreave was wow. maybe like yeah. This is kind of a famous photo from that era of the police yeah, like yeah. beating down like the striking miners. I think right. that's what it is, yeah. Yeah, just an interesting record that's kind yeah, of overlooked you. and forgotten about a little bit. Hasn't been reissued or anything. Um, what year is it again? 84. Okay. You know, I, I used thought to you were gonna s- Yeah, I thought you were going to say it was like Proto Grind or Crust or something. No, it's, it's like, like Carcass Connection. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I need it. Like punk, post-punk, dark, <laughs> yeah. UK. Cool. I'm down with that. Style from the yeah. You know. Yeah. I used to have this record when I lived in in the UK, and I must have sold it. I just found it a couple of weeks ago in the wild out oh, here. No. And I was like, Jesus, dementia. So I've gone from like insanity to dementia. <laughs> right, right. Was uh, Mike? Was <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, Wasn't uh, Carcass uh, pre? Not pre. Uh, Electro hippies, weren't they? They shared. There were some shared members in those two bands. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jeff Walker, I think, was in yeah, both. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thought so. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Steve. What's your second record of the oh, day? Me. Oh, great. So yeah, I saw Cliff asking in the chat. Um, you know, I don't to get to black metal. Um, so this is not a black metal record, but this probably is the most grim record I'm going to talk about today. So um, this is uh, Future Terror. The LP is called Plague. It's a band out of Richmond, Virginia. Oh, this came out in uh, 2019, and this is just like DB crust. And um, the reason I want to talk about this today, um, I've been listening to it. I dug it out recently because uh, I feel like there's been a trend recently where like a lot of the newer DB bands have like really trebly or almost like clean sounding guitar tones. And I don't know how I feel about that. And this is like one of those bands that like brings back like those really burly 90s, like just super heavy, like DB guitar tones, which I really, really love. And um, I do have to admit, I am friends with some of the members of this band, so I, I am definitely biased to uh, to like their stuff. Um, but uh, yeah, this record features uh, members of, um, let's see, what uh, what bands were they in? Uh, it's the drummer who plays in Destruct now. Uh, he's no longer in this band, but uh, he now plays in Destruct. So if you're familiar with them, you have a, a pretty good idea of what this record sounds like. Right, like, right. Desolate, pounding, DB crust. And then uh, two of the other guys are in this band called Prisoner. Oh yeah, there we go. There, like set. Nice one. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. called Prisoner, which is more like kind of industrial metal, and you can hear a little bit of that influence. There's like, some very like industrial esque like, interludes on this record. Um, mm. I mean, like the whole record just looks like the cover. It looks like you know the extinction of humanity, fucking smoke stacks, fucking uh, tanks Elite. crushing skulls. It's like you know that scene from the first Terminator movie where they had like the flashback, the future terror scene, and you know you know they took their name from uh, was it the Clay? I think or is the the band. That, who wrote that, that sounds like I I've seen those words somewhere on a. <laughs> so every good punk band's named after so, like yeah. some reference to some other punk band, you know. So, <laughs> and uh, I heard recently uh, they they went through some lineup changes, but they do have a new lineup playing again now. So they started playing shows again, and uh, I heard there's a new record in the pipeline too. So I'm very excited to hear some more like just brutal punishing DB the way you know, in my opinion, it's meant to be played. <laughs> nice. It's like no other way, DB. no other way to play it, man. Yeah. Like I'm a huge fan of like uh, bands like Three Way Come, and you know I feel like they just really channel that just. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, that, but I've just gone off topic a little bit. I did just, like sneak a preview of the new Destruct album on YouTube. That's oh, yeah. amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're actually playing with them tomorrow night here in I Philly. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Very oh, wow. excited for that gig. I'm about to. It's them and uh, No Fucker as well. So wow. Oh. Definitely get my head caved in tomorrow night. <laughs> 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 Nice. So Destruct has a they have a new record out. It's a coming out movie? soon, right? Oh wow! Yeah, the pre-order just dropped. Yeah, um, Grave Mistakes putting it out. Okay. And then, and then I think yeah, Alex, who's, Alex, who's the common member between this record and yeah. Destruct, also has another band called Horde Peace, which did a flexi recently. It's just total like doom worship. So I mean, like those those Richmond kids really know their their like '90s crust, and I, I respect. I was gonna s- okay. I was gonna say as I was listening to that Destruct. The drumming also sets them apart a little bit. Yeah. He's a fucking amazing drummer. 
Yeah. There you go. Really, just as I said that, I've, I was about to say that there's that Frampton thing going on, and my friend Jesse, hey Jesse, how you doing? He says mm-hmm. the Destruct is, is the best early Frampton record since the early, <laughs> early Frampton records, which is yeah. yeah. Yep, sure. that says it right there. Yep, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So that's my uh, my DB banger of the day, right there. Wonderful. Yeah. That's like I didn't know about that record. Yeah. So. Cool. And it's on a Philadelphia label too, so uh, Revolt Records. So uh, oh, right. okay, okay. It's a rep my hometown a little bit as well. Do you know that record shop in Philly? Sin, sit and spin. Records? Oh yeah, it's literally down the street from me. I go there all the time. Yeah, it's run by a couple punks. Like they came up here and performed like one of their bands or something. It's hard yeah, yeah, yeah. Colin and Leora run that uh, shop. Yeah, they're great people. Cool they shop. just celebrated their ten uh, year anniversary as a record label. So, oh, nice. Uh, made me feel really, Yeah, it's good. good. But yeah, love to see it. Love to see punks survive and thrive. So, yeah, and record shops, you know. Yeah, cool. Yep. All right, Jason, what's your second pick of the day? All right, I'm gonna go, go for something a, a little bit more new school. Cool. This is a band I just I discovered them live. So I went on a little road trip with the wife and I, like back in 2018, before the pandemic. We drove up that highway from LA to San Fran, that beautiful highway along the water, and we stopped in. Uh, Santa Cruz, fucking love Santa Cruz. Oh, yeah. So we're walking down, it's like a little beach town, right? And I see on the on the marquee, like there's like this synth wave band that I've kind of heard of, Boy Harsher. I'm like, cool, oh, yeah. man. I, I heard of that. I'm gonna check this out. This is the opening band for that that show called Special Interest. Oh, okay. And they're out of New Orleans. Hey guys, I gotta step out for a second. I gotta go take yeah. care of something. I'll take more than a minute or two. Okay, go ahead, man. Go ahead. So yeah, female fronted. At least two female members, I think, in the band, and uh, I want to say like synth punk, but it's it's more like no wave kind of mutant mm-hmm. disco, some post punk action going on, some it's great ass screaming. Team. It's fucking fun, man. First track, young gifted black and leather. It's a fucking sick track. <laughs> the whole thing, and they and they've got disco on side A, and then they've got disco two on side two. It's on Raw Sugar Records out of New Orleans, which maybe they run or it's a small label. So yeah, special Corner. interest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm a, a big fan of Boy Harsher and a, a lot of that, like you know, newer synth punk yeah. kind of stuff. So um, that's definitely going on my uh, my. You know. Yeah, this is a good one to to fit in there. It's a little bit more screamy in your in your face. It's a lot of fun. Nice. I've seen that and it's been on my kind of radar, but I haven't checked them out yet. It's worth picking up. And yeah. I went to that show. I picked up this record. And I picked up like three Boy Harsha records. I <laughs> just like <laughs> stacked up, man. Got everything. Yeah. Expensive Good gig, show. huh? <laughs> it, was, it was pretty cheap. Like back then, they were selling them pretty cheap. Oh, nice. Yeah. I might show Boy Harsha later. I got it in the pile, but. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I won't. I probably won't do it now that I've what? said. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. <laughs> so Tony says Colin and Leora are class acts. Awesome shop. Awesome people. Yeah, Mike, Six you should get them minutes. on the show someday. They could talk yeah. about records. Hey, yeah. <laughs> Come on. You're both welcome anytime. There you go. That would be cool. Yeah. All right. Special interest. Yeah, as I keep seeing that name pop up as I'm, like, delving into, like, the that kind of area. Yeah. They might have a newer one since okay. this one. I don't know. This is, like, a 2018 thing. 2017, 2018. Nice. It's good to get new stuff on the show, too, right? Yeah. Nice. All right. He's back. Back with a vengeance. What you got for us? All right. So uh, for some reason, this has been popping up on my Spotify playlist when I listen to music at work. And I pulled the record out and it just it just reminded me how just how ahead of their head of the time they were, man, and just how obnoxious and just catchy they were. And I've been listening to this nonstop for (laughs) for maybe the last two weeks or so. And it's just every song on this, man, it's just sarcasm at its finest. I mean, just how they fuck with authority back in the day. I mean, this is Reagan era, man. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These guys were were just, they fuck with the cops. They fuck with fucking government (laughs) officials and just. Man, it just I don't know how I, if they did that now, I don't think they would get away with it. But I mean back then, I mean Jesus. Yeah. And man, every song on this is just 
A plus. I mean, every every song is just memorable. But yeah, yeah, just been listening to this a lot lately, man. And uh, Dart, man, he, his vocal style oh, and yeah. so his, his lyrics. Very, 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 very original. And uh, I mean, I haven't really heard anything like this no. recently or just in, it's just really, really unique. And I don't know. It's just really, really, really amazing. I can't, I mean, just, it's just great. Yeah. It's, yeah, it doesn't it's, get any better than this, man. It's definitely a one of a kind record. Yeah, and you either kind of like you can handle Doc Dart's vocals or you can't. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, I mean, if you get it, you get it. If not, then hey, too bad for you, man. I mean, I'm, I feel I really bad for you if you don't get it. Yeah, I I love that record. I'm a big fan of the next one as well, like Wisconsin. Oh, that's a great record too, man. That's I love that record. It's like yeah, more, they took it longer took songs, it level, level, man. more psychedelic, bigger production. Exactly. Yeah. Even uh, Doc, even Doc's uh, a the, solo record is really good too, man. I've heard so. And there's another Crucifix album called The Eye. Isn't it called The Eye? Yeah. Love, which I've never, not even, I've not heard yet. I've been meaning to get to that for decades. I still it's on the reissue CD. Okay. It's uh, included with the first LP and then the I LP, Alternative Tentacles. Okay. All right. Thanks for that. Yeah. That's funny. I remember I was just thinking of that. Tony says, uh, sound from Born Against did that amazing interview with Doc Dart. I don't know if anybody's read that. It goes really deep. I've read it. Yeah, I read it a while back when I was in my uh, when I first started listening to Crucifix. I, I dug deep, man. Just found everything online like twenty Base, years ago. Baseball card collect. And there's so many like crazy stories about Doc Dart in that. And that interview is amazing. I remember it. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Very very original, man. Yes, that's a great record. That's I'm gonna to listen to that. Yeah, <laughs> so I haven't played it for a while. It's a classic. It's an all-time classic for sure. Oh yeah. yeah. Jim says it. Hinkley had a vision, right? <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, he did. <laughs> Hello, Jim. How you doing? Hello, everyone, for tuning in. A lot of friends here tonight. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, I've seen some some good buds in the comments tonight. I always appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, it's always good to have people watching watching you when you're making a fool of yourself, right? <laughs> yeah, indeed. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I always think of a uh, I always think of the Crucifix along lines with like you know the feeders and the Dead Kennedy, just like bands with really distinctive vocalists, just you know insane lyrics, insane you know like antics in real life too. Like love them or hate them. Yeah, like, the feeders, man. Them. Respect, yeah, yeah. Feeders, oh my god, that river felt like killing your boss record. Oh my god, brilliant, <laughs> even like flipper as well. Too. And with the sandpaper cover, yeah, yeah, so it's like the toys the other to it in the, yeah. fucking genius, ultimate level trolling right there. I love it, yeah, amazing, definitely. All right, another band with great lyrics, too, man. The feeders, man, yes, you know, they fuck with authority and just, yeah. It's like no yeah, one's that done title, that title. That yeah. title is amazing. Ever felt like killing your boss? <laughs> <laughs> I like these. There's like I said before. There's like very different kind of things. We have like new stuff also. There's things like that where it's like a kind of memory jog. It's like, fuck yeah, I haven't listened to that for a while. I must get. That's what I was like. I was listening just it was just on a, it was just on a you know it just everything was just every, songs that I haven't listened hadn't listened to in forever for you know exactly. Cool. Like Crucifix, and I'm like, man, I gotta go home and listen to that. You know, <laughs> pull out my record and put it on, and just, and man, yeah, classic band, so, classic here. Thank you, time. thank you, Spotify. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go way back, way up, like something totally different. I'm gonna go back to like 1972 for this one, and um, Ethiopia. Uh oh. oh. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping that some one of you will have n know this record. Maybe or it doesn't matter if you don't. But it's like, how much, how far can you guys like go with the jazz? Like, is any of you guys? I'm a jazz board? collector. I collect some jazz. All right. I'm more of a seven. I'm a '70s fusion kind of guy. Cool, cool. But I like I like the free jazz. I like the bebop stuff as well. Cool. So there are certain <laughs> like saxophonists that have that really like distinct tone, like Ferro Sanders, Coltrane, right. obviously, and. 
Wayne Shorter, who just oh, passed away yeah. Yeah. a couple of days ago. I mean, but I'm not talking about American jazz today. I just, mm. I just said I'm Ethiopia, 1972. This is like, I used to have this record, like, not a record, but just I used to listen to it on YouTube or Spotify like all the time. And mm. a couple of months ago, I actually found a copy of the record because it got reissued. Man, this is such a killer record. It's this one. Hang on, let me take. Let me take the uh, the jacket off. There we go. Mm -hmm. Get at you, Mercuria. Okay. Nineteen seventy-two, Ethiopia. Ethiopia, super like raw. There's no like mm. kind of fancy drum work. It's okay. just usually like a polka beat, like. Dun, 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 with this like menacing like cheap keyboard and then he comes in with this like totally unique and like e like recognizable like sax tone and just mm. or, and just goes crazy over the top of this very kind of simple music with just drums organ bass it's absolutely incredible it's up there with like pharaoh sanders and wayne shorter and but it's Ethiopian, so it's like un, it's not Western influenced at all. It's just who did the reissue of that? Like, what is that on? The, yeah, I'm gonna get to that. This is like the Heavenly Sweetness reissue, right? Okay. Heavenly Sweetness does a lot of reissues of like old African. I've got or, one Ethiopian jazz record, uh, but not that, and it, it is really cool. Yeah. It's just like honestly, it's unbelievable music. And I mean, if you think oh, I don't like jazz, give it a try, because it's not like yeah, yeah. Western jazz. It's it's different. And like, that looks like an absolutely huge saxophone, too. It is quite a big yeah. one. <laughs> it's a lot of power. Yeah, there is. Yeah. It's like, yeah, get at you, Mercuria, and his saxophone. That's what it says on the back. Looks like he made it. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's just unbelievable music. Like I said, if you think you don't like jazz, give it a try. And I love the way that, like, Heavenly Sweetness did this. They didn't put their logo anywhere on it. It's like an exact, like, replica of the Phillips right, yeah, yeah. original. That's cool. And you know, with the original like center labels and everything. Mm, There's wow. no like they didn't they didn't slap their own like logo on it or anything. Yeah. You can find it, it's out there, Heavenly Sweetness. And you know, sometimes How much does an original go for? Oh for Jesus. That? I mean I've not I don't think there's even one on Discogs. There might be. But I would honestly I'd rather have this because I'm sure an original would be like partied on. <laughs> party on. Party. Yeah, yeah, party yeah. on. <laughs> But you know what? Sometimes when you hear this kind of music, you kind of think it in your like Western ears, you're like, oh, this is kind of punky. And it's like a punk vibe to this stuff, right? Because it's like so raw and energetic. Fast forward like two or three decades later, this guy is making records with the X, who are like the Dutch yes. anarcho punk band, like affiliated mm. with Crass and stuff. Oh, wow. so, oh, cool. so all this stuff all makes sense, you know? Yeah. Wow, this is a great record too. I, I had to show this just to kind of like tie into like punk yeah. a little bit, but <laughs> sure, yeah. Terrible. It's cool. Sure it's Listen to other genres too, right? To like just open up I, your mind. Exactly. Yeah. I like that record better because this is like a bunch of like you know these guys, and there's yeah. obviously some like more rock. Even though it's the X or kind of like an avant-garde, like an arco like punk band. Yeah, there's still that more rock backbeat in there but it's still great there's like herky jerky guitar and stuff in there too so either way yeah. either of these that one or with the x it's just great music hmm. that's my third nice. thing Thanks. Very nice. yeah, i definitely want to check that out that's very interesting i think i, I keep i've said it like four times now but now, you know it's like if you think you don't like jazz check that out because it might yeah. take you in a different direction and i do yeah. like jazz i'm even more excited. there you go <laughs> Same here. More in the fusion, you know, but uh, like Mahavishnu Orchestra, you know. Oh, yeah. 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 There you go. John. Hi, John. Says, yeah, they did. They did. They did two LPs together. Two I don't LPs, have the second yeah. one. That's awesome. Yeah. And they yeah, together. it is. Yeah. And this guy was from Ethiopia. Ethiopia. Yeah. 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 That was a big e scene. Ethiopia yeah. had a huge music scene until like they all got wiped out by like war and stuff and then it just was wiped off the face of the earth for like a, a, a mm. long time right so, and famine and stuff but uh, there's so many good ethiopian records from the 70s there's a whole different there's a, a huge rabbit hole to kind of go down right there it's 70s ethiopian music nice yeah all right 
Steve, what's your next pick of the day, my friend? Well, Mike, you've actually inspired me to uh, oh, yeah? this a little <laughs> later in my shuffle, but I think it'd be a really good segue. Shuffle, it's, um, shuffle. Shuffle. Same time period and uh, same continent, but a very different genre. Um, I had a, a friend came over the other day uh, with, a, with one of their uh, acquaintances, and they were just looking at my record collection, and they're like, oh, my God, you have so many records. Like, what's your favorite record? And it's like, how do you answer that question? You know, it's like, it changes every hour. But like, you know, the guy wanted an answer. And I was like, well, what's the best record I could tell this guy to check out that he's probably right. never heard? And I've been listening to it ever since. And so my pick today is Witch. Oh, oh. You know, yes. This is uh, from Zambia, 1975. This is their third LP. And uh, I think it's my favorite. It's like just one of those records I can put on and it immediately like cheers me up. It's just amazing, well-played psych rock just completely unique i mean just uh you know this is i think i read that uh this was like the first commercially released band in zambia like when their first record came out so like these guys were definitely like trailblazers with what they were doing and um you know this is like one of those records where i recommend it to like everyone i know it doesn't matter what kind of music you like like you will like this record you gotta check it out it's just so good and you know they were active i think from like 72 to about the mid 80s and then you know just you know war and strife and yeah. The you know Reagan's global policies have just decimated the band and everyone else, but uh, I'm really happy to say that the singer has recently um, put together oh, yeah. a new live band and he's playing again. Really, and wow. see them play in October of last year, which is a band like I never thought in my life I would ever see this band play live, and then I got to see them play. And it's only the singer's the only original member from this record. Uh, the keyboardist has been around since the the 80s, and then like all the other guys are like like probably dudes in their 20s from like Belgium and Germany, just like throwing them on, but like killing it and, you know, just absolutely delivering the goods. Where, so, did, you, where did they play? Uh, they played, uh, they did like a, a couple, uh, they, uh, actually they originally did a U.S. tour back in uh, 2019 and I missed that. I found out about it too late and then they Shit, just came back at the, uh, at the end of 2020. But yeah, it seems like they're playing pretty regularly. They played a, a new song, so they're writing new material together. So I'm wow. hoping that we're going to see some more. All the new music. songs. Have you heard the new songs? Yeah, they played the. They debuted one of them uh, at the live show, and it definitely like sounded like you know had like a more of like kind of a jammy kind of psych feel to it than like the like strict seventies rock. Yeah. But like you know, this is like the kind of stuff like anyone who's familiar with like the Brown Acid series definitely wants to jump on this. It's just like that real raw, real just wild, rigged out like seventies like rock. It's, just. it's so primitive and raw, and like it kind of took me, it, it, like surprised me at first because it was so like raw and basic. It's yeah. Fun. Fantastic. I love that record. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, just like the layers of guitar on it are so good. There's like one song, uh, uh, Motherless Child, that starts with like a baby crying. And I'm like, oh, do they record this like in their living room? Like, this is, it sounds incredible. Like, this is so cool. So, yeah, this is just a great piece of like music history right here. Just yeah. incredible. Yeah. You know, if you cornered me and asked me what my favorite record is, odds are I'm probably going to say this one just because everyone needs to hear this at some point. I, I had one of their records in my shop recently. It was a reissue from a Toronto label, put it out. It's an album called Moving On, I think. Oh, okay. I don't know if that's similar, but yeah. it was that witch band, yeah. Cool. Yeah, no, this uh, it actually stands for uh, We Intend to Cause Havoc. Yeah, that's, that's yes. cool. Thanks, thanks Brendan. Heavy rock. Yeah. Because yeah. there's a lot of witches out there, but uh, this is We there Intend is. to Cause Havoc. So. I have, that's yeah. in my, like, definitely my top two of witch, <laughs> witch bands. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder if there's a terminology for their, uh, the lazy bones. What, what is that? I mean, Oh. Maybe in their country that means something. I'm a reference curious. to something. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, the know, witch that I the witch I know is the sludge one with Jay Massis in it. That uh, right. Doom yeah, just, that I also was, actually it's funny that I saw them play at the same venue that I saw this witch what? play at. But like <laughs> oh. ten years apart from each other. Was uh, was Graham in the band by then from Annihilation Time? Was he in the band? And which uh, no Graham? I don't Oh. Yeah, he wasn't playing with them at that point. No, no, it's like yeah, Jay Mascus and like guys from that band Feathers, that like folk rock band from New Hampshire. So yeah, it's kind of more stoner than Doom. Yeah, yeah that's that's I, I really like the first record. Oh, there we go. That's, that's, the, that's Ethiopian. the Ethiopian jazz record I got. Yeah, oh, uh, which is pretty popular, right? We just got a comment about um, Maluda, there we go. Maluda it's, Ascada, right? It's uh, Mulatu Astakte, right? Yeah, it's fucking cool, man. Yeah, he's he's oh, one of the big. He's not one of the big names in the Ethiopian like yeah. jazz. Great, great record. Great record. 
I love how this episode has turned into Ethiopian jazz for beginners. That's that's a great thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's you should call it, right? And <laughs> and Zamrock. Hey, we don't want to be. It's the gateway right here to Africa. Yeah. Cool. Zamrock, Ethiopian jazz. What you got for us, Jason? <laughs> oh shit! Am I up next? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was so busy pulling that one. All right. How about some Texas hardcore? Hey, this is a band I never really, I, I didn't really uh, hear about in the 80s when I was a little kid, but I sort of discovered them more recently in a, on this reissue. Oh, dicks. what? You've never I heard know. of them? I didn't know the dicks, man. I don't know. <laughs> Hey. I'm saying. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I know. I know it happens, man. But like, you know, I have my DRI for, and I have butthole surfers from uh, Texas. Uh, but man, did I ever miss out on this? This is fucking awesome, man. Kill from the heart. This is still often, cool classic, man. It is it ever, eh? So yeah. I often spin like some punk records and stuff at like local bars. I always love playing Rich Daddy. Oh, that's yes. my favorite song on the record. Rich Daddy. <laughs> Never had one. Yeah, it is great, man. I, I need to get more of this stuff. Like, I don't think they're around anymore, right? Like, do they still tour or anything? Or no, they to, I think they do a show here and there. Well, yeah, occasionally they'll California. do a show here and there, but no, no. I mean, they're not a regular band. Yeah, yeah. So that's pretty cool. Regular man. live band, that is. Yeah. That's yeah. Occasionally they'll do a show here and there, but. That's about it. I don't, but I don't yeah, that's a great record. I don't know what label it was originally on, but the Tentacles, right? SST. Oh, sorry. Oh, was it SST? I'm sorry, SST. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. yeah and then uh, Alternative Tentacles bought the rights. So okay. Okay. We issue it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good punk from Texas. Just we're, from that era punk. that the Pretty Crucifix right? record comes from, where like you could be a punk band, but you could play like all this like different stuff like blues and, and yeah like jam song and and like um you know that's a that's a classic texas classic and another great thing oh. about that record too is that you know lend its name to uh that crucial uh website kill from the heart you know that yeah. was uh at least for me you know coming up in like the late 90s early 2000s that was like how i was piecing together all the you know, early '80s hardcore bands and how they all like what their discographies were, or how they were connected to each other, like discovering new bands that way. So I remember that. Like, part, it's not only for this record, but it was a hugely important resource to the you know early internet uh, record uh, hardcore scene. So yeah, that's my record. Yeah, great record, man. Glad you uh, discovered. You know, you, you know, it's never too I was late, late to, to the party. It. Yeah, I, mean, yeah I, I was pretty late to the party on that one. It's, it's great though. Awesome. I mean, we were talking before I, on before we start about the Italian band that I didn't know about. Yeah, it right. happens, right? It happens. There's so much stuff yeah. out there you can, you can miss know. things, right? No. It reminds me of the last episode I was on. Cliff was talking about how he'd bought his first out cold uh, out cold record, and like you know, yeah. he really like jumped through the screen. Like, what were you waiting for? <laughs> 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 you know, it's he never, there, too never, 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 never too late. Never, never, never too late. Never too late. I've never heard a bad, bad like out cold record. I'm just yeah. realizing that right now. I've never heard one bad record or just the, some of all the records are amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All Such right. a great band. Hey, Christian's here. Robert's here. How you doing, guys? Nice to see you. Thank you for dropping by. All right. Jen, what's your next pick of the day? All right. Let's go. All right. So another spot of uh, Spotify uh, <laughs> gem. And uh, I had to add, uh, like, my previous record, Chris, the Crucifix. I had to pull this one out and just like, nice. eh. it's the. Oh man, I got that. Yeah, old lady drivers. Old lady drivers. <laughs> Love that shit. That's on earache, right? Last appearance on this show from OLD. Yeah. yeah, that's like old school death metal grind craziness. Yeah. This is another. Another unique, like just way ahead of their time type yeah. record, you know. Just the, you know, we were talking earlier about vocals, Doug Dart's vocals. This guy's vocals are just, my God. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, old lady drivers, man. Just I love an, that just, early earache shit. 
Yeah, this is Earache uh, 7. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, an ODM. Watch number one. 7. Single digits. Wow, yeah. Yeah. Way back. Yeah. yeah, you've been listening. You can just help in the layout. You know, get that classic, <laughs> cl 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 classic layout. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, man. Oh, man. I just yeah. wish I would I could have seen these guys live. I'm. I. They must have been just sarcastic as fuck as as the record, you know. Yeah. But you know, the inside jokes that nobody would get. But yeah, every. I mean, this amazing record as well, man. Just where, do, where were they from in the UK? Were they like Birmingham or something? No, or they're from uh, New Jersey, America. Matt. They're, in America, they're from Jersey. Jersey. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Oh, on your ache. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Jersey's the Birmingham of America. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's something. That's for sure. So I, I bought uh, I bought that record off a guy on YouTube. That and uh, Here's C. You bought a record off YouTube? <laughs> well, no. I mean, it's a channel. It's a channel. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we set like, dude, it up. eBay, he's, he's... <laughs> yeah, YouTube? Yeah. Yeah, hey, what YouTube. the hell? I've sold records on I'm YouTube. missing the boat, man. Yeah, it's a thing, times. man. Go the times, old man. You can you can do an online auction on on YouTube, but yeah, I think I paid like yeah, thirty bucks or something. But if this, an OG, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, this is OG, of course. This has never been repressed, I believe. I don't think so. Uh it might happen though, because Eric are doing that like repress, okay. repress vinyl. Oh, the on demand, demand, the on demand thing. Oh, really? We'll see. We'll wow. see. It could happen, right? But that's interesting though, because it does actually tie in with that like insanity thing, because that definitely came about with all those guys like tape trading, like the British yeah. guys and the American guys like tape okay. trading, all the like the insanity demos, and all that, and that's how they forged those friendships, and that's how that <laughs> OLD record ended up coming out on Eric. I I think mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Very cool. There you go. This uh, it was good pull. Uh, Stone Cold Ripper right here, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Back in the glory days, too. glory days of Eric. Now they're doing a Buck Cherry and. Uh... Oh my God! What the hell are you <laughs> thinking, man? Yeah, but you know. Yeah, anyway, that's, that's another. That's another that's hour. Another, I mean, let's not go down that rabbit hole of like. Yeah, episodes. old lady drivers. Huh? <laughs> old right. lady drivers, and if old if anybody has the uh, their, their split with uh, Asuk, uh, get at me. Hey, you can buy your record like on that. YouTube. There you go. <laughs> there you go. YouTube. There you go. Hey, get at me. <laughs> Make it happen. Let's do it. YouTube, yeah, YouTube put marketing, in the comments. <laughs> top yes. one? Top one? Please. All right. <laughs> so that's my, uh, what is it, the third pick, yeah. Third, third yeah. Third pick. Third pick, yeah. It's round four. Hey, Pam's in. How you doing, Pam? Good to see us. Uh, Pam says that the Butthole Surfers did that song. About Gary Floyd, about the Dixing. That's true. They're yeah, referencing the All dicks, right. yeah. Scoots is here from Rhode Island. Scoots is coming on next week. He's an old buddy. All right, Scoots. Nice. Scoots, we how you doing, my friend? All right, round four. Amazing, amazing artist, man. He's a great. He he draws really good. <laughs> yeah, underrated, underrated artist. I would say he, he should. Yes, be on more, he did more the grave. Uh, he did the uh, government warning. Uh, no moderation. That he did. Yeah, that's yeah. an amazing like, record and yeah. artwork. Yes, yeah. yeah, that's Scoots. Hi, him. Hi, him, Scoots. Good to see you. There you go. Good dude, back hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, round four. So a couple of weeks ago, or a few weeks ago, he said, shut up, he says, shut up. So a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> a few weeks ago, I showed this crazy French synth punk yes. record. Oh, yeah, cute. And just keep this artwork in your mind as I move on to my pick of today. This, yeah, it's, there's a theme here. This week, I'm going to go, <laughs> go oh, with yeah. this. R.I.P. Dead End, which is a new band getting up to date here. So are Portland they from band. France too? Hmm? Are no, they from no, France? they're from Portland. It's a Portland band. This is like their oh, third, shit. this is like the okay. third LP, I think. And um, this is a genre I don't know. Uh, actually, yeah, you mentioned like the brown acid things, right, Steve? Yeah, that's Riding Easy Records. Yeah, that's on the same label, right? It's, uh, on, uh, it's uh, on the same label. Yeah. yeah. So they're Riding Easy is this label that does like. <clears throat> Stoner rock, and they do like these reissues of like old, like garage punk and old heavy rock and stuff. And so that's their kind of ballpark, right? It's like yeah. it's kind of stoner rock and like hard rock and psychedelic rock. Good label. I, I like this label a lot, but uh, this is kind of a new band, you know. And they put out, uh, 
Early Moods. They put out the Early Moods record too, right? All of that record. Just saw them play live in Philly last week too. Yeah, which is another great record. So I'm I'm kind of a big fan of these like younger guys with long hair and beards like playing like (laughs) retro music. (laughs) I can hang with it, you know. But this band, I mean, like, you know, it's hard to describe what they sound like. It's like, you know, they're a Portland band. I just, when I hear it, I just think leather, motorcycles, you know, cheap horror movies, like bad drugs, bad trip. You know, it's like just all these different influences like thrown in this pot because they're young guys, right? So there's all sorts of different stuff going on in this record. But I don't know. I don't know how old these guys is, but I always have this kind of image in my mind of like kind of people younger than me that like one day they kind of got a computer and like in one day they kind of downloaded like the entire discography of like the Stooges and Black (laughs) Sabbath and Black Flag and Nirvana in one day and liked it all and then formed a band based on those four, four bands. And that kind of sounds like that, but it's great. I, I really like it. It's like kind of raw, heavy rock mixed with some grunge and some like hardcore a little bit. But, uh, and the know. name of the band is R.I.P.? R.I.P., which has been done before, obviously. But Yeah, like the Spanish band. band. <laughs> Spanish band, yeah. Is that is that on 20 bucks spin? Because Cliff said no, he no. got it. So riding, <laughs> where have you been? Riding easy. Riding easy. Riding easy. Okay. Riding easy. Riding easy records. I like the back. Back cover. That looks cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it almost looks like a midnight record right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's all these there is a bit of like that sleaziness and you know like that band Satan no, Sat- <laughs> Satan Satyrs. Yeah. Oh, it's, 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 yeah. It's kind of in that kind of same ballpark, yeah. you know. Like sleazy, oh, yeah. like tripped out as a bit of doom in there, there's a bit of psychedelic, yeah. there's a bit of hard rock, there's a bit of punk, all kind of yeah. thrown in there. They can make up their mind, man. Pick a pick a genre. <laughs> pick a genre. <laughs> yeah. Heavy punk. Yeah, it's a mix. And, I don't know. I I'm, I like it. You know, that young dudes having a good time. All good the old, young dudes. All the young dudes having all a good time. Young dudes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I have a lot of uh, I have a lot of releases from that label. I haven't checked that one out yet though. So like yeah, next time I order from them, I'll them out. This is their third LP apparently. I don't have oh. any of the others, but it's like. And mm-hmm. this another, I'm going to show this just because I, I can. It's, it's cheating a little bit, but if you know this band, it's kind of in the same ballpark. Oh, Warish, yeah. Okay. Warish, yeah. also on. Yeah, same label, right? Riding Easy <laughs> Records. Riding Easy, if you're looking in, we're always open to uh, <laughs> receive some free records. But this, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, this is Tony Hawk. The, the genre, is, right? Uh, R- Riley Hawk. Tony Hawk, the skateboarder's son's. Skateboarder's hmm. son is this it, it's his band. Oh wow. Okay. What? Son is in a band. Wow. That made me feel old. Tony Hawk's kid is I'm in a band. Yeah, exactly. it's this band. It's this band, yeah. This band. Warish. I'm doing a two for now. I remember Thrashers. R.I.P. and Warish. Both on writing easy records. Both kind of similar. Nice. Both of them yeah. can't choose a genre. <laughs> <Both> great. <laughs> it's a thing now. Like, you know, just mix it up. Fuck it. Mix it up. Yeah, yeah hey, that's why I break the rule too. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying I know. pick a Pick a genre, but hey, if you want to just you know, keep it rolling, man, keep it rolling, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all good. Well, some bands change genre every album. Too, yeah, that's like, what we don't. So that's, that's, that's okay. Right? So I, I, you know. Yeah, they're experimenting, anyway. you know. Kind of like, like Buck Cherry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking more like Napalm Death, but uh, <laughs> or, or Morbid or Morbid Angel when they did like the techno stuff and oh yeah, 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 oh, yeah but, you know, we don't talk about that, right? metal. Yeah. <laughs> I, I dig this stuff, you know. I'm I'm, a, I'm an old dude, but I can I still have some time for some younger. I, mean, I don't know. I don't even know how old they are. I'm just like making all these assumptions about their age and everything. But I think they are like kind of maybe Steve's generation, maybe. I'm like you're gonna get a season to assist, man, for <laughs> for ageism. Man. <laughs> what are the millennials listening to today? Yes, yeah, yeah. or the Gen Z? But Billy like, Eilish. Yeah. Great band, R.I.P. Check that record out. If you like oh, I thought you were going to say uh, Billie Eilish is a good band. I was like, what? <laughs> Some people dig it. Yeah, I, yeah, I know. Hey, hey, no, I'm judgment not, hey. no, no judgments. No, hey. judgments on the Billie Eilish. Hey, 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 hey. 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 <laughs> I mean, she's like won a Grammy, right? I mean, someone must be liking it. So. Yeah. Apparently, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Who did? Billy Eilish, really? I think. Of course she oh, did. Oh, yeah, of course she did. Yeah. R.I.P. won a Grammy. 
Yeah. Oh, that's us. Awesome. That's weird. After appearing on the show next year. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Steve, what's your fourth pick of the day? All right. Well, last time I was on your show, I was talking about how much I love uh, synth punk yes. and uh, that prospects record we were talking about earlier. I um, bought it thanks to your recommendation. Thanks. So, uh, I, I got thought for a second I said synth funk. Synth punk. I mean, also good, but not what I'm talking like, about. Yo, today. you like cameo? <laughs> <laughs> they were good, man. They were damn so, good. So uh, today I want to talk about this new record that just came out. Uh, mm. The band is called The Mall. They're from St. Louis, and this record's called Time Vehicle Earth. And this is okay. just like punk like hard techno ebm it's got kind of like i don't want to say like harsh vocal but the devil like strained vocals i mean like the guy sounds distressed while he's singing but um wow. it's just like it's one of the it's ever since i got in the mail i've been listening to it like every single day it's just like uh mm. I've, ever since like the 90s i've had a soft spot in my heart for like you know good techno music and stuff and um and I, yeah i love like when you can kind of combine that with like punk sensibility and like punk lyrics and things like that and you come up with like this really nice mix. So, I mean, I've been in love with this. Their first record came out, I think 2021. And as soon as I heard it, I was obsessed. And so I've been like greatly anticipating this. And uh, so the mm -hmm. final release just came out like a couple of weeks ago and wow. been ruling my turntable. And then uh, today they just announced uh, there's a fest in Philadelphia in June called um, something to talk about. And the mall is actually going to be one of the headliners. So I am beyond stoked because my band's also playing that fest. So now I get to oh. the go mall? play. It's cool go like drop some acid and watch them all just like decimate the room uh which i'm really excited about so so does it have microdose microdose yeah they all take all the microdoses uh right in there uh, just uh, grab, oh. your, grab your jab and <laughs> so do they do like some heavy industrial is there like some industrial vibes on there too or is no, like, no guitars on this album box? it's just like all like pounding oh, analog yeah. synths like heavy beats wow. and then vocals. okay and yeah, originally the band started off as a solo project. This guy, uh, Mark Plant, uh, they were in that band, uh, Broken Prayer, if anyone's familiar with them. But, um, yeah. yeah. So they're this started off as a solo project. Yeah, and, they did a record on Sorry State, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. And then, um, good record, good record. I remember that. This record, record uh, the, the Mall's now a duo. Um, they have another member, uh, Spencer Bible is the other member now. So Mark Plant and Spencer Bible are bringing this to you live and ferocious. And, uh, yeah, like I, I can't stop listening to this record. You know, if you like my prospects pick from last week, this one's a little more rough. You know, prospects was a pure pop record. This one's a little more rough around the edges. The mall. The mall, yeah. And the mall. Uh, you know, like, uh, the mall. Like this yeah, morning, like, Bill posted about this band called Shopping. It's oh, like, no, we've got like shopping and shopping at the mall. mall. <laughs> the mall. <laughs> kind of hard to Google that shit, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> the, what label's it on again? Uh, let's see. This was, uh, I think this might actually be self released by them. All right, um, like a band camp thing you got, or yeah, that's where uh, that's where we're, uh, oh, or actually, yeah. I, I picked up through uh, Sorry State because uh, you know, they're you know, they've worked together in the past, they uh, mm -hmm. they kept in stock over there. So, and I order from Sorry State like every six weeks. Hi, Daniel, thank you. Uh, Hi, Daniel, we'll get them on again soon, right? Yeah, exactly. I just, like, yeah, I just uh, pre ordered the, the Alliterates uh, LP that just uh, oh, yeah. I'm definitely I can't uh, wait for that, man. Nice, nice, nice. Sorry, sorry for interrupting. No, no, that's yeah, cool. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Fixed Grin Records is the name of the record label. Fixed Grin, and it looks like it's Fixed Grin number three, so it's uh, must be a newer label. Um, but yeah, I love this stuff. Can't wait to see them in June. I, they actually played Philly once before, and I was so excited for the show. I've been looking forward to it for like a month, and I was like riding my bike to the show, and I got a flat tire. And I had to like carry my bike home and defeat and like change my tire. And then by the time I was done with that, they had already played. And I was like, no. Nah. Yeah. Uh, I was like literally messaging the guy on like Twitter, like, come back to Philly. So now he is. And th thank you. You know, I appreciate I it. I would have ditched my bike and got yeah. an Uber. Or or Uber, Uber, dude. Uber, man. <laughs> Don't they got Uber there? Yeah. yeah, the venue was like nine miles away from my house. So I was like, oh, oh get to the mall. Get to the mall. Like, That's far. Yeah. Like crossing the city, like the greater metropolitan area to get there. So. I hate flats, man. I, I ride a bike everywhere too, man. Yeah. So really, really worse. Rain on my parade that day. <laughs> All right. The more. Okay. Nice. All right. Jason, what you got for us? All right. I'm going to do a little uh, Canadian pick here. I got to represent the country cool. here. Yeah. I nice. don't know if you guys have ever heard of this band, but it's some grindcore this time. Six Brew Bantha. Oh, I've heard of them. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. Yeah. They're from the West Coast. They're from Victoria, BC. This is an album I think they put out like 2017 or 2018. It's just some fucking amazing artwork. Amazing very, artwork, man. Yeah. Very bleak and grindcore and crust esque. And is I saw them good, live. Is it, it's, it's good grindcore, not that uh, gore or porno grind no not that porn yeah exactly i know what you're saying right that those are the times when i'm like why am i reading these lyrics <laughs> do not read lyrics <laughs> but i've been i've been kind of on a grind tip lately i've been really getting into grind um like you know full disclosure i did not listen to heavy music like metal or punk in the 90s or 2000s at all so i missed a whole bunch of stuff you know like i listened to hardcore when i was a little kid and then i got more into hip-hop and then techno and all that kind of stuff so I've rediscovered all these like '90s grindcore bands, nice. etc. But like a Gothicles, like if we were doing a CD show here, I'd be showing some different stuff. But yeah, mm-hmm. Six Brew Bantha, it's fucking sick, man. Um, I saw what? these guys Do you live. You know what the name, the band name means? Or is it more cool. like an inside thing, or I'm not really sure. They have a couple of albums. This album's it's called. This album's really, called really a unique uh, band name. Yeah, Six Brew Bantha. Yeah. I saw them live here in Ottawa at like a like a small like book bookshop cafe or where they were doing like hardcore shows. And I think they're only like a two piece. So they came out and they just fucking ripped through like 10 minutes of insane grindcore, crazy blast beats and shit. And they're like, okay, that's like side one of our new album. Now we're gonna do side B. And then boom, another 10 minutes, wow. and then it was done. And I was like, That's oh, awesome. This. Yeah, it's pretty dope. Oh. Um they have a mix of the of the growly kind of vocal, but also a lot of the banshee kind of higher vocals as well. Banthor oh, is a Star Wars animal, star. apparently. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the more you know. I think the, the best, one of the best grindcore records that have, have that that has been released in the past ten years was a uh, Insect Warfare. Man, mm. I don't know how you could top that. I mean. If I was in a grindcore band and, and then I heard that, I'm be I I, I give up. Well, I, I, was gonna, I was going to show this. I was going to show this band from Poland. Oh, sure, hey, right. Anyway, yes. just, now I'm double dipping, but this, this is also a fucking cool record. It's grind. You can do like ten grind records in a, in like one. I could split. right. Yeah, it's fast. Fast and Furious. Boom, boom, boom. The seven inches like the LP for these guys. For yes, sure, yes, you know? Yeah. Seven songs. Seven songs. Song. Yeah. yeah. I have a real short attention span, so yeah. Grindcore has been really fitting perfect for that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Ten Grindcore records is like one big record. You feel so accomplished, right? Like I put on a Grindcore, like, wow, I just did that whole thing in five minutes. Like, another one. Interesting. What What is the first uh, Grindcore record ever? Like what Napalm Death or right? before? Gum? Would it be Repulsion, Terrorizer? Yeah, I mean, Terrorizer. Is... I would say. Yeah. I don't know. That's a doozy, man. You, you, that's the one you got to sit down and really, really. And research yeah. before you answer that question in front of a lot, a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know people are going to start commenting right now. Yeah. Dude, yeah, you, yeah. you didn't mention so and so. my band. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, my band, my band from the Philippines, man. You didn't mention them. Well, some people yeah. say that like hardcore was invented by like like Japanese band. Was it SS? Because like their first SS, record. the first hardcore. I think people that's... say that right. I really. Wow. Or we can go back to way back. You know, the monks. You know. Time. Yeah. yeah. That's probably the first punk record ever. The monks, man. Hmm. The GIs in Germany. Hmm. Someone. I think oh Bill Bill Chamberlain he talked about that record. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 All right. It doesn't surprise me that Bill has that one. <laughs> All right, Jen, what's your fourth pick? All right, this one uh I'm gonna highlight a, a, a label. All right, cool. Okay. From uh the Netherlands. I'm not sure if they're from uh Amsterdam or Holland, but man, they're they've been I just got a package from them last week, and I've been just listening to all these reissues. They, they, uh, let me just show you guys. So the first one is a compilation of uh, unreleased material from from Holland. It's uh, Larm Attack. Not sure if you guys are familiar with this label. Larm Attack Records, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah, they've been just re- reissuing a lot of a lot of cool stuff. 
but this one's uh, it's all it's all Dutch uh, bands. So you can see where I'm point, uh, pointing at right now. Yeah, it's like the Rockarama mm. label. Mm. It's just a, like a homage to early Rockarama. Rock early Rockarama, right? Yeah. No, yeah, early. Not 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 <laughs> Screwdriver or Skin Corpse Rockarama. You know? Right, right, right. But uh, yeah. So yeah, pretty cool. Bunch of stuff that. Yeah, these are all Dutch bands. Let me name some of the bands here. It's uh, Fosaga. I'm not. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing these bands through in, in the Dutch. Yeah, Dutch is a weird language. So good luck. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Ko- Kotsbroken, Orbesti, Orbesti Hirselid. Uh, I give up. And <laughs> Stostrup. Sto- the only band I've, I've ever heard of on here. It's it's Stostrup. They're on Rockarama. Stostrup. They wow. did an, I believe, an LP. Which is top notch, like just. Yeah, I don't have a lot of Dutch hardcore. I've been getting into a lot of Finnish and Swedish hardcore, but Dutch, I don't have a lot. Holland has some great stuff too from the the eighties. You got to start. Yeah, Jason, you got to start with uh, uh, Agent Orange, man. Agent Orange, yeah, Jesus and the Gospel Fuckers. Yes, Um, yeah, I have a course. Lam, Lam, of course, and Legends. Oh, Lam, yes. Okay, wow. Yeah, see, I don't know any of these bands. Oh. And this uh, record's Nagua. Awesome. Is Nagua Dutch? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I just got that seven inch repress recently. So. Mm. What? Ooh. Which one, uh, Steve? Nog- Nogwa. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My buddy put that out. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Well, yeah. Tell him good work. I bought a cup. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let him know. And uh, they also reissue these Finnish records that I'm going to show you guys. <laughs> okay, some Finnish hardcore. The Kajas. Oh. I know that one. Yep. Oh, yeah, cool. yeah. And it's on a lovely turquoise Ooh. color vinyl. Ooh, it's like the sky blue almost. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. Pretty. Yeah, and it was also... a pre restitute, right? Yes, BGK. sir. BGK is a big one too. BGK, BGK for Holland, yes, sir. Jeez, they also reissued this. Oh, oh, oh such God. a good record. Yeah. R.I.P. Milaka. Yeah, and the. Um, <laughs> Um, so who, uh, from who was uh, previously talking about Portland, mm. uh, you guys remember Brickwall Records? Oh, yeah. Yep. Mm. Um, that was Billy's label, right? Billy, yeah. Build, build the Ramp. Build the he, Ramp. Uh, reissued yeah. this, <laughs> yeah. what, 10, 15 years ago? Right, right. So yeah. this got reissued with extra tracks on Earth. Oh, One thing I always really loved about that band was they had like that really metallic guitar tone. But it's yeah, they were proto, yeah, proto crossover kind of, you know. Yeah. We had this splattered color vinyl. Yeah. Uh, I'll show you guys one more record. <laughs> from from the from what I got. It's breaking yeah. the rules. We're breaking the rules. He's a punk. <laughs> hey, this is what happens when you get punks on here. <laughs> hey man, this is uh, alarm attack, man. I gotta, you know. Yeah, yeah give <laughs> you it gotta represent. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Another yeah. absolute classic. Classic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is also a reissue. And mm-hmm. this also has uh extra tracks that are they're not on the Fair Ward uh reissue. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I have a Fair Ward copy, which in itself has become a collector's item. So <laughs> yeah. Right. And then I'll show you the vinyl. Nice killer. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Pretty cool. But yeah, you guys have heard of these guys. So yeah. yeah. I mean, just wanted to, you know, show, you know, sh- you know, showcase uh, a, a good label, good cool. doing really cool reissues, you know? Yeah. And yeah. Uh, did I highly, highly recommend? And uh, if you could, you know, find them. That's all crucial stuff, indeed. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's all, yeah, been played a lot, too. Cool classics. <laughs> really stoked on these records, yeah. All right, last go around the sun. Last round for today, for today right? Man, this next band I've been listening to them for like maybe more than any other band for like the past couple of months, but I haven't found the space to like fit them into the show yet. But I'm mm. gonna tank. Take today. A tank. <laughs> tank. Not 
tank. New new album. <laughs> new, <laughs> new album stuff. Uh, tank's easy. I gave it a shot. You could try. Good guess. Good try. <laughs> I was like Ramones. No, no it's a poor I've been listening band. to no. since I was. The years. nerves. The nerves. <laughs> Yeah, great that's mistake. true. We start off great, with that. Great no, mistake no. record. They were on great mistake for one album. This band. Okay. Good label. Yeah. I'm listening. Listening. They've got four full length records, but only one is on great mistake. Their second record. So I picked that one because that label is kind mm. of a favorite, you know, label of this channel. Mm. This record is kind of a bit different to a lot of the stuff that great mistake puts out, but I fucking love this band so much, especially like a little bit late at night. I don't want to listen to any like, old lady drivers or um <laughs> insanity or i want to kind of right, put it down a notch you know that time of the evening i'm going to put on a big eyes big eyes oh big man eyes. i haven't big, heard their name in a big while big eyes <laughs> big eyes hmm. yeah good band man i mean this band is really kate elge's band like she was she moved to portland this is the lineup of the band that she put together in portland they had a record before this with a completely different lineup. Um, and this came out on, uh, you know, great mistake records. But it's like, not to tie it into the RIP record, but it has all these influences. It's like 70s hard rock in there. Like Cheap Trick, Kiss, Bloister Cult. There's like power pop in there. There's punk rock in there. There's like, you know, guitar indie pop in there. This, it's about the songs. Just every song is just like a, a hit. Almost going back to that nerves thing, where like every song is like a, super super catchy really good song with a chorus and a big hook and a great melody classic it's like pop punk when it used to be good you know yes sir uh, yeah. and you could say there's a little bit of that l7 sound in there too you know oh. a little bit that, like grunge and heavy rock and hard rock rock and garage in there too Babes in toyland oh, yeah. it, it doesn't go quite that far no, it's, no. More, okay. it's more like straightforward like power pop or melodic punk just it's a great band i mean i love this band but i picked this record to show because it's on great mistake but uh just nice. every song is like an earworm that's funny we're, we're talking about a uh, great mistake earlier you know yeah i chose this specifically because great mistake often shows up on this channel and they you know it's a good label so good label and, yeah Look, and, I'm uh, looking forward I, to that Destruct LP, man. I remember yeah. there was another reason why I did this, because when I posted another of their records on that in the group, people were like, hey, is that a hipster record or is it good? <laughs> people were saying, right? <laughs> so I was like, okay. Yeah, it's fine. true. Like, that, that cover kind of looks like, is that? Yeah. Is, that's right? yeah. is that post-punk? Right? Where are you going with this, Mike? Come on now. Is that yeah, the new Billie Eilish? What do you what do you mean like <laughs> hipster? And I've talked about this before. I'm in Japan. It's not a Xerox like, cover. It's not black right. and white. It's, it's what's like, going on. There's it's no nice. skulls. It's, it's not, it yeah. feels nice, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's it even smells nice. It's like oh my god. It's like, it's like you know. Okay. So my answer to that is great mistake records. Awesome. Great you know mistake. I mean? Yeah. But it's yeah. just a punk rock record. A really got great melodic punk rock record. You know. Nice. Cool. Which I love. Check it Big out. eyes, and re really, it's Kate Eldridge. It's it's her band. Really, she writes all the songs, she sings, she plays guitar. Uh, but on the first record, if you look closely, one of the guys is wearing like a disclose T-shirt or patch on his jacket. I love that. So I'm like, why are you like, wh why are you questioning <laughs> this? You know this That's jacket. Cool. You know, and apparently that guy played in uh, Iron Reagan and Mammoth Grinder. Okay, oh. there you go. Yeah, but he's not on this record. He was in the, the first lineup of this band. Like I said, yeah. I think Kate like moved around a bit, a little bit, and she kind of had new lineups, different lineups where wherever she was living. But this is the Portland, Portland edition of uh, edition. Yeah, I was gonna say edition. Yeah, yeah. great. But I love this band. If you like melodic pop, melodic pop punk, big eyes, top of the heap. That's my last pick of the day. Do they, uh, do they cover the nerves at all? <laughs> they cover the remotes. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, don't, they don't need to do it they don't need to do it because their own songs are so good you know? all right all right yeah that's my last pick big eyes what uh what ramones songs do they cover oh i don't remember it's on the other record not on this record oh, on the, my bad. On the, other, on the other record it's like a later period ramones like deep cut like not one of their hits you know? okay right yeah yeah the one with all downstroking on the guitar yes that one <laughs> that one <laughs> all right. poison heart 
It's not Poison Heart. No band can cover Poison Heart, man. I know, I know. <laughs> it's too good, right? It's too good. Thanks for putting me on blast, Mike. And you, oh, nobody can cover. <laughs> <laughs> man, I wouldn't want to be a band that tried to cover Poison Heart. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, It's a perfect song, right? It's a perfect right. song. Yeah. All right, Steve. All right. Last pick of the yeah. My last pick, uh, this one might be a little unexpected from what people are, you know, sorry, Cliff, no black metal picks today, but this one actually ties into uh, the... Hey, um, hey, hey, wait. wait that might, might be. Yet, that might be. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we, not for me. Still else else okay, okay. Yeah. But uh, this one ties into the, the last record. Uh, you know, The Mall was a synth wave record about time travel, and uh, this is one I just found in a uh, used bin earlier this week. I'm really excited to add this to my collection. It's Electric Light Orchestra, it's their album Time from 1981. Ooh. So this was like For apparently a very, a very yeah, controversial record that came out because it's when they switched from like the very orchestral sound to like a more like synth driven sound because they were trying to cash in on like the Human League and Gary Newman kind of sound. But right. jokes Cars. on them, I love Human League and Gary Newman, so I love this record. And I've been nice. listening to this like nonstop since I got it this week. Like, absolutely incredible, catchy record. Every song is perfect. And it's a concept record. It's about a guy who travels from 1981 to the year uh, 2095, mm. and uh, and he's like just trying to like understand the world around him. And he's like, you know, he's nostalgic to be back in 1981. He's got a girlfriend back in 1981. He's like trying to like send her dreams to tell her what happened to him. And uh, there's one song on here where he like uh, he's singing about like meeting a girl in the future that reminds him of his girlfriend, but he's like, but she's part IBM and part telephone. And I'm like. Jeff Lynn predicted the smartphone in 1981. Like, <laughs> yeah, totally. Ahead of the curve. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, another, uh, to tie this back to my last appearance, too, I, I talked about that band, uh, The Iyer from Philadelphia. Well, uh, Daniel from The Iyer is the first person who ever played me this record because I told him I was a big fan of ELO. And he was like, oh, do you like the 80s stuff? And I was like, oh, I haven't heard it. And he put this record on. I was like, wow, I need this. So okay, I literally I just found this from like, a U shop in uh, Hanover, PA, like this tiny little hole in the wall shop and like as soon as i saw this i was like i was meant to come into the store and find this record today so i've been blasting the hell out of this it's like a great companion piece to the mall if you want like synth driven time machine music both records i have mentioned today go uh really well hand in hand uh, nice and, uh, you know like dollar bin yeah probably uh, i think this was like an eight dollar record you know they, they knew they had something good here so uh okay and uh, you know, i've loved ELO ever since i was a kid like i remember my, my parents playing, like uh you know, out of the blue. So uh, I know it's past their bedtime, but if my parents are watching this tomorrow. You know, thanks for giving me good taste in music. And, you know, I'm still out there buying LO records in my 40s. So you did something, right? Man, that's, I, oh, goosebumps. I'd love ELO. And, you know, that was like the last ELO record that I got got to because I kind of grew up with them. And then I, I jumped off it. That's after Discovery, right? Yeah, this one's the first one okay. after Discovery. Yes, because I jumped off at Discovery because I, I I couldn't stand it at the time because it was like, it's like Discovery, right? Dis Discovery. It's like yeah, Disco yeah. Discovery, right? That's the yeah. joke. But it's like, yeah. so I never checked out Time. I was like, well, why would I bother with Time? Because I didn't really like Discovery too much. And yeah. people said, no, you should really like give Time a chance. It's a great record. And so like about a couple of years ago, I picked up a copy and they were right. It's great. Yeah, yeah I definitely prefer this What's one to Discovery. <laughs> Hey Mike, was it seven yen? <laughs> was it seven? I wish. Seven yen. It was probably like two hundred and forty yen or something. Like that. Yeah, that would what be is that, cheap. Twenty yeah. bucks. <laughs> so twenty bucks? About? No, no, like no. two bucks. Two, two bucks. bucks. Yeah, two thousand oh. would be twenty bucks. Yeah, okay. I think that's yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. They're in the thousands. Yeah, ELO. Even better. One of the best bands of all time. Yeah, I I agree with that. You know, someone know asked me. That. Oh, my friend and I were joking the other day, and I was like, "Yeah, all my favorite Beatles records are ELO records." Yeah, there you go. Just the, band, the band the Beatles could have been. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Sorry, no black metal to my uh, to my friends today, but you know, I had to double down on the synthwave stuff this week. So cool. Uh, That's just great. I like that that kind of like that old friend that comes back. You know, yeah. the ELO. Yeah, incredible record. I mean. I celebrate their entire discography. Love that band. Can't get enough. What's your favorite? Do you have a favorite? That's a bit of an on-the-spot question. But... Oh, that's a good question. Like, I would say up until now, probably Face the Music is the one I listen to the most. Yeah. Um, but this one, I think, is it's creeping up there real quick. Like, nice. Like, I've been listening to it like multiple times a day since I got it. So, Wow. Just full of hey, earworms. Mike, did uh, BOC ever have a synth era? 
yeah the whole whole 80s stuff is like chock full of like the you know fire by unknown origin and all those records are full of like no like heavy like just oh no I, more like, not the, like, like not gary like, newman like ELO. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, maybe not. I don't. I don't think. No, so. I didn't think so either. I mean, like the one with the UFO on it. That, that isn't. Yeah, just the spaceship. That isn't even. That's kind of synth I'm, pop. Right? I'm a big fan of that weird Neil Young record where he does synth pop. The trans yeah. album. I love that record. Me Everybody too. fucking hates that record. I, I think it. even Neil Young hates that record or whatever. Right. Right? <laughs> you know, that's a that's a fucky record, right? To the label. It's a fucky record to the label. Yeah. 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 It's fucking good. It reminds great. me of Gary Newman, like some of this great, stuff. Great, it's great. Totally picking up off that, yeah. Just because they were uh, they were bugging him for doing a, a record as another <laughs> rock record. Right. Yeah, we need more rock. What did Neil Young do? <laughs> well, I think he's like, fucking pop. genius. Man. He did like Just, the '50s rockabilly record. That too. too right? Yes. Did he? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, you want a rock record? Okay, I'll give you a rock record. <laughs> it was like so Geffen Geffen <laughs> records, right? He just gave yeah. Geffen Records all these weird records that they didn't want. The Geffen years. Okay. Yes, yeah. the Geffen years. Yeah. The G years. Yes. Mm. All right, Jason, what's your last pick? Looking forward well, to I'll, uh, I'll vibe off Steve here. I'll go with all electronic right. pick as well. Cool. Uh, I got some some really uh, kind of punk techno, lo-fi Ooh. techno. This band, this artist is called Black Meteoric Star from New York wow. City. Look at that. Uh, it's a trans artist that I originally had some stuff by them as Gavin Rusum, but now I think they're Gavelina Rusum. And I got this off like their band camp, Beatbox New York City. Actually, wow. it was really fun. I got they it came with a CD, a free CD as well, of like just more beats. Oh, and the inside's got like lyrics. It's mostly instrumental, but there's two tracks that have vocals, including on side B, Hey Asshole, which is a lot of fun. <laughs> or they're just calling out like hey asshole. Hey asshole, get out of here! Hey asshole, that's kind I'm of the whole song. But yeah, it's it's all it's just a white label thing, and it's it's a full album. It's like four or five songs on each side, and just really cool lo-fi stuff. I collect a lot of lo-fi electronics, so it's synth bass, but it's a little like it's kind of got grooves on it. It's got some acid house on there, nice. and wow. I think it's on. This is their label called Voluminous Arts. Volume of thoughts, mm-hmm. all right. Volume yeah, it actually came with a sticker as well. So I got the full package here for a band camp order, you know. This is oh, yeah, sticker. Nice. Work. yeah, that so, has like a real like DIY aesthetic to the whole thing. Yeah, I was gonna say the labels and everything, man. Yeah, there's a paper a copy, DIY right? aesthetic. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're a multimedia artist, I think they do some visual stuff as well in, in based in New York City, but uh, it's definitely something cool to check out. Uh, it's different. Definitely. Wow. Black, Black Meteoric Star. Nice. That just cover alone. I'm like, I'm interested mm-hmm. in that just by looking at it. It's a big the... fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <It's something>. yeah. <laughs> I'm sure Neil Young to his uh, record label. <laughs> yes. yeah, no, that was <laughs> yeah. an homage to. <laughs> Boy, he did the same thing to Rogan, you know, just <laughs> Spotify. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. True, man. I can't believe it. It's the last pick of the day. It's like oh, time it's all down to Jen. Whew. Holy cannoli, man! It's the uh, weight is on your shoulders. Oh, yes, it's like the pressure is almost unbearable. Will it be DB? Will it be hardcore? What? I don't know, man. I'm just Zamrock. I don't know. Black metal. Stick to one genre. Black metal. <laughs> yeah. Another label showcase. No, it's <laughs> not a black metal. <laughs> What's that? Oh, he's frozen. What was that? No, no, no. The label, the label showcase. Was the label label showcase. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Oh, last beer too, man. Oh, oh perfect. Man. Cheers, cheers, everyone. Cheers. Cheers, cheers to that. Yeah. Good show. Good, Good show, show tonight. Hey man, Good it's variety. been really, really cool, man. Yeah. Looking yeah, forward to doing it again. We'll do it yeah. again. We'll do it again. Yeah, yeah. man. Everybody, yeah, everybody yeah. here has been top notch. I like all your picks. You guys are gonna uh, yeah, You know much. something. That, uh, Never listened. I mean, not never, but I've, uh, haven't listened to yet. You know, yeah. like the EDM and yeah, yeah, whatnot. Yellow, yellow. Uh, <laughs> yellow. Yeah. and uh, Blue Oyster Cult. Blue Oyster like Cult. just Big with eyes. with you know, just with Gary Newman. <laughs> I think he should. Anyway, all right, all right. guest appearance. That, that would be kind of cool, actually. I would be into that. Gary Newman on the show. 
on a no, on, on BOC. On a, yeah. BOC. <laughs> BOC with Gary Newman, man. Touring together. Coming cool, at you like so. No, man, just <laughs> doing a whole Don't album that. together. Just yeah, that collaborating. Cool. That Don't cool. fear the synthesizer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy. I've actually, I've seen Gary Newman live. Actually, it was a very good show. I saw him. Me at, too. Uh, Even yeah, I saw him maybe. Cool I saw him two, three years ago. He was amazing. Yeah, yeah, he puts on a good show. I saw him about a decade ago, and he did like half a set of all the really early stuff, and then the other half was like his more like yeah. Nine Inch Nails. His more, new stuff's great, though. Yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. Trade, yeah. When I when I saw him. He kind of rushed through cars. I don't think he wants to do that anymore. He's tired of it, right? <laughs> totally fucking like tired. Of it. <laughs> yeah, that was quick, but yeah, yeah, get out of the way. Like, yeah, that's his free bird, man. It's like he doesn't want to do it. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like, fuck again. <laughs> okay, I got it. All right, fuck. All it right, up. here it is. There we go. Ta-da. Last one. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's not a black metal record. Oh. <sighs> <laughs> maybe next, next, week, you know, or... next time next <laughs> time yeah i don't know whenever you invite me again i'll yeah you know, i'll break out a couple you don't have to you don't have to pick a <laughs> okay. all right this is my last one man and uh it's funny that it's you know it's my last pick too it's it's amazing it's an amazing record uh these guys are from greece oh from terminal okay seven like the last batch of records I, I, was, I was showcasing, uh, these guys are obsessed with Finnish hardcore. Oh, Tervi, Tervi uh, Ratus, right? Uh, Malaka, of course, but I was Finnish 82, man. Yeah, this, this is all that's it's all written on this, man. These guys are from Greece, they're Greek. Yeah. Mm. And man, if you guys, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Greek hardcore. Not much. Yeah, I don't have much. It's also, yeah, they, they display uh, their background as well. You know, it's definitely they, got they, its own sound, right? They throw in some Greek hardcore in there too, but uh, but heavy, heavy, heavy Finnish hardcore from Greece. Terminal. And I, we were speaking earlier about ordering records from uh, Bandcamp. This is a Bandcamp mm-hmm. release. There you go. Not YouTube. Oh. It's the, uh, a, <laughs> like a newer band, then is what you're this this they've been around, but this is this record came out earlier this year. I like I said, I ordered it on uh, Bandcamp. I ordered right away because I think it's already out of print because there's only 200 copies of this bad boy. Oh, wow. but uh, like I said, heavily heavily influenced by uh, the homeland, Finland hardcore. Wow, terminal, terminal. From Greece, yeah, and just came out January. Yeah, it's really, really new, right? It's like yes, probably the newest record that we've it's definitely the newest record we've seen. This is yeah, this is the newest, yeah. And the whole layout as well with with the labels, man. This is total. Uh, just yeah, really like, simple, yeah. like old Finnish hardcore records, man. That cover looked oh. reminded me of a totalitar. It did a bit. Yeah. yeah, that was the first yeah. thing I thought of, yeah. My bit. first thought of, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. No, I was right on the same page with you. <laughs> Have you guys Greek- heard the new, uh, the, the new uh, Puffin bands from Totalitar? Like no. Exploit. Which one is that one? Exploitor. Uh, Verdict, is, it, is he in that band as well? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I still need to grab that, that newest LP. It's been a little trickier to get here in the States, mm. but... Uh, Oh, I love the artwork. It's the same uh, in the same uh, vein as uh, all the other uh, Totalitar. Oh, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Same, same yeah. artist. Yeah. Love to see that. Yeah. All right. But yes, sir. Yes, sir, guys. This is the last nice. pick. Of Great way to end up. Not a black metal record. But there's some really good black metal bands from Greece. From Green. There is, from yeah. Greek. Rotting Christ. Marathon. I think I got yes. a Marathon. Marathon's great. Oh, Greek, Greece has like. The, Again, one of those has that a really unique sound. There's a lot of like really yeah, good did. like dark Thank crust from Greece too. Oh like, yeah, like hibernation. Yeah. yeah, that Great. kind of scene. Hibernation. Yeah, a lot of good music. And yeah, I think the the most yeah, recent uh, band I've been really excited about was uh, Anti Mob. Yeah, like that's another, like, the, a really yeah, it's fucking repress. impossible to find though, right? I know. It's like someone repress that shit, please. Like I know <laughs> yeah. at least hundred punks who want a copy. Like yeah. you could throw them. You go to you go on Discogs. Those records are like a fifty to hundred dollars. That should yeah, not be real. happening with a current that's new stupid. band. That's not good. Let's keep these records like imprinted. Why do you think I bought this, man? Because yeah. I know it's gonna yeah. go 
quick yeah. and that's a retirement plan you know, right? i need some money you know <laughs> sell your seven inch collection yeah all right what a great episode loads of like variety loads of great takes. been a learning experience been a fun experience as always so thanks everyone for tuning in mike thanks i mike. promise i promise to uh on the next ish i mean this next episode i'm invited to i'll i promise to display a, a black metal record <laughs> maybe <laughs> from <laughs> maybe from greece maybe from brazil okay brazil Ooh, from yeah. the Philippines. brazilian, brazilian black metal. Yeah. that would be brazilian be cool. black metal is top notch mystifier yeah it's it's yeah. Sarko Fago. That's how you pronounce it, people in YouTube land. Sarko Fago, not Sarcofago. It's Sarko Fago. There you go. You heard it here first. <laughs> you it. Hey, I'm just trying to help. You are. Yeah. That's a great record. We'll save well, it. Yeah, later. guys. Hey, it's nice meeting you guys. Uh, Steve, Jason, and yeah. Mike, as always, man. Uh, I love you, buddy. Uh, you. Uh, glad to be your friend yes. this long. We're going to log out. But we'll carry on chatting if you've got guys have got some time. So, everyone, of course. thank you. We've got to talk about Brazilian uh, black metal. No, no, ELO. <laughs> ELO. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Either right. one's okay. Hey, let me just announce next week's episode before I leave. Okay. So I always forget to do this and it's kind of bad. So, it's like next week, it's kind of a Providence, Rhode Island thing got going on. Oh, nice. Got Devin, Devin Cahill, former oh. member. Who's not yeah. living in Providence now? He's living somewhere in Florida, maybe. I don't know. Uh, and, uh, like I said earlier, uh, good dude, back hard. Yeah, <laughs> and Dave Dorak of AS two 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 O, a really important a venue in Providence, great venue, and yeah. an old friend of ours. And then Scott Langley, Scoots, artist and uh, beekeeper extraordinary. Yeah. There'll be like a Providence, Rhode Island special next week. So maybe and I heard he's good on the pin. Go on the on the on the pins. You know, drawing. Uh, yes, he's a great artist. Yeah. The pins. I should have said pins. Because <laughs> yeah. I'm sure he doesn't just use one pin. I'm sure he uses a lot of <laughs> right. Other All pins. right. Until next time. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week. Have a great week. Have a good weekend. See ya. Stay healthy. And